<laughs> not doing it. Okay. Here we go, guys. Welcome right. back to Plank Town. You We're are still, still in Plank Town. In fact, oh, you got some informations here and there. You don't even know what's going on. But let me tell you what's going on. What's going on is... Um, Did you just say your MacBook decided to restart? <laughs> oh no! Apparently it did. I guess we just get the frozen image uh, across tonight. Brutal. Mm. Go for the recap. Nope. Well, I can at least leave it to him that he took good notes. I know he does. So. Okay, so you guys went uh, kind of, uh, you guys had a couple hours to kill before the gala at the, um, at the Carrillos, and Master Lee Soto gave you guys two tickets to attend the affair uh, with the hopes that, you know, potentially you could find out some information about the, uh, the Grave Digger Fever um, and, uh, he also mentioned to you guys that, um, he mentioned that, uh, Edgar, one of the, um, one of the, uh, the watch, uh, gets drunk over at the Cypress Creek Tavern and potentially he'd be a good source to, uh, get some information uh, about what's going on, as well as uh, he said he offered that you um, um, try and ask the children about what's going on because uh, they might talk to each other and then maybe they'll talk to you. So Hedok and uh, Utiquad and Fizz went to the Cypress Creek Tavern. However, it was just the middle of the day there and they had the goldfin soup, and uh, along the way, they uh, they also uh, found the um, the statue, which was uh, there was a statue that um, um, had the it was a statue of three girls, and um, it was to the men that were lost. Uh, um, going against uh, Tash Tiba. Um, he also found uh, the tower, Cinderbloom Tower, and he managed to uh, get Hedok to hoist him up there in a little basket and took three books from the tower. The books he grabbed were uh, books that uh, look like spell books, spells for the initiated, war spells for wars, and spells against boys. Um, they also found the Brawler Boys Hangout, noted by a sign. Um, and uh, let's see. He, you said he doc yes. got the books. He doc got the books. Um. And then while that was all happening, Bobbins talked to uh, um, who did the Sonfers, and um, you uh, you learned a little bit of information about Tashtiba, but not too much because it was making them feel a little uncomfortable, and. Um, you also heard about, well, actually, uh, Hedok, Fizz, and Utiquad also heard some rumors about some widow Tandy that's going to be executed in the coming days. But not really any more information on that. I heard about Baxter. Indeed. 
you found out that Baxter was uh, wanted, right? Uh, well, he was in hiding, wasn't he? Indeed. Yep. Um, so the story there is that Fortin had run him out of his. Well, he he uh, accused him of uh, human trafficking, and um, took possession of his. Uh, um, what is it called? Carnival. Yeah, I got another name for it, but yes, it's a carnival, basically. <clears throat> so, but he he hasn't been found. He's he's uh, he's still kind of uh, missing. So nobody knows, uh, you know, what the cause is of this grave digger issue. Uh, some think that it might be uh, Baxter exacting some sort of revenge. And of course, Master Lee Soto suspects something is up with the watch. Um, also... While you guys were out and about, um, Blanche has leveled up. How did she level up? She was meditating for four hours. Mm. Mm-hmm. Aren't you jealous? No. Yeah, you are. Don't. It was like in the last episode, that was the first thing that Bobbins was like, we need to go do a rest. <laughs> And you did. Well, apparently my leveling's from tied to resting up, so. <laughs> um, so, is Uniquad back? No. Nope. Well, we kind of need Uniquad, because I believe you guys are going to send him and... Blanche. Blanche to the gala, which is which is where you guys are going to start out. As it, you know, it, as evening creeps in, it's, you know, the, the frogs are getting louder, the, um, the cricket sounds are getting louder. However, um, you don't, you don't get the sense of like, there's a lot of bugs in this town, which is interesting. There he is. He's not in Skype yet, but he just came back in the roll twenty. Yay! That's good. The smiling jester is the name I was looking for. The, the Smiling what? Jester was the name of uh, Old Baxter's carnival-themed place where he had his oddities and magicians and Teshtiba frequented with her things. That was some of the stuff that Bobbins got from uh, so the Sonfers. Mm-hmm. Um... Do you, is there anything you want to do to prepare um, for the gala? Mm -hmm. uh, I guess, like, I would have to find some clothing somewhere. Is there somewhere in town where I could find something that I could borrow for the thing? Well, you wouldn't be borrowing, but you could certainly buy something from the business district. 
Well, why would I buy something when I'm not? I'm probably going to go back out adventuring. So well, you know, don't they have something no, like, they, they you know, don't, like rent they don't, the no. runway where you can like rent it and borrow it? <sighs> you like know, guys the can rent, rent tuxes all the time. <laughs> <laughs> like, on the second thought, they, are, they invite adventurers. Just go in your adventuring garb. Okay. They can deal with it. <laughs> You brought them their medicine for their children, so. Well, they didn't quite invite you. You were given tickets by Master Lee Soto. I mean, that's kind of an invite. Oh. <laughs> you could certainly go in your adventuring garb. Will you be armed? This is good for me to know. Will you uh, have your? Yes. You Wait. Will, you'll be in full they, armor. Do they take our weapons away or something like that? Nope. Oh. No. We. We remember we kind of. Uh, Yester way through that. Yeah. Okay. Um. Well, yeah. I'm gonna have my weapons with me. Okay. Good to know. She doesn't go to parties and arm. That's dangerous. Yeah. You never know when the assassins are gonna come for you. Come on now. Indeed. I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> You're going to bed? Yep. Tell All them right. about the gala in the morning. <laughs> so Utsuquad is launching Skype right now. Yep. Hmm. I'm telling you, IT department, that's what we need. Tech support! Well, <coughs> Nelyani, what will you be doing while all, all of this stuff is going down? Um, I'll probably be meditating because I there's nothing else to do right now. Well, if you're going to meditate, you might as well pick your, <laughs> what level are you on? Four spells. My four spells, okay. Indeed. Just click that little red dot next to them and you can... Um, you know, you can do that every single time you rest. You can pick the same spells. You can pick different spells. It's completely up to you. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, this level one beer. Uniquad. One day we'll all be level two. What will I do then? <laughs> Any suggestions for a level two beer? Nothing too fancy. Yangling. Hmm. I feel like it's hard to get that out here. No. Yeah. Maybe at Benny's. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I can get it at the liquor store at the corner. It's always funny to me that they don't go much past the East Coast because it's not like they're, you know, a small brewery. What are you they're looking they're for? They're the oldest brewery in the United States of these Americas. Yeah. And they have like, I think two breweries, like one in Pennsylvania. I don't know. I was getting that stuff in Florida. Yeah, that's all over the place down here. Yeah, it's all up and down the East Coast. Come on, Utaquad. What's going on here? He's got Go a very bed, old honey. computer. We've had a solid run. Hmm. Maybe I'll be level three by the time he gets in here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I would say go ahead and level up your character. I just don't know what's going to happen, so I can't quite. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, we know Blanche is a wild child, so she'll probably get us run out of town. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, you're probably not going to get interrupted. Uh, yeah, go ahead and level up your character, dude. Okay. Now I have to actually make a choice. Yes, you have to make a choice. Are you going to roll your hit points, or are you going to average them? Average. Ah. That's not my choice. Old Blanche is fearless when it comes to that. She just rolls them 12s, or whatever mm -hmm. it was you rolled. Go big or go home. That's right. <laughs> you to quad. You to quad. Come on. Well, I can at least. No, oh, it doesn't matter. Is there anything you want to do before heading to the Scala, Blanche? Now is the time to do um, so. Is there any prepping? Is there anything mm -hmm. you want to know from Master Lee Soto? I mean... Well, I guess... So I want to... So that's who gave us the tickets, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, Master Lee Soto is, wanna... your, is your point of contact. He's your guy. Oh, okay. So I want to ask, like, so what kind of, um, what kind of people are going to be at this gala? Oh, well, and if you remember Master Lee Soto, he's, he's, uh, he's, he's only been here for a couple months. He's, he's not, uh, he's not a local. Um, so he's, you know, he doesn't know everybody, but he says, oh, well, it'll certainly be everybody from the casters. Um, you will probably run into, um, and he, he's like, let me tell you exactly who's going to be there because there's some I know and then there, there will be a lot of people there. There's going to be a lot of children. Um, and then there's going to be, where in the heck are my notes? You know, you got, you take notes for a reason and then you can't find your notes and everything's gone to shit. Um, so he's like, yeah, so certainly the Carillos will be there. Um, so that, that's Hayden Carillo the third and his family. Um, the you know the it is the Carillo home of course, um, the okay. Cinder Blooms will be there, um, the Half Whistles, so Vice Chairman Coleman Half Whistle and his wife, they have a ton of children they're uh, likely to be there, um, mm -hmm. the Garys uh, I believe you have met uh, Rita Gary, she's the one who was working at the town hall when you guys arrived. Um, uh, Sonfer and uh, Malova will be there. I said the Sonfers before. Sonfer and Malova, the, they're the talls. Um, they'll be there. Okay. Gus Sand will be there. Um, and likely Fort and Hera will be there. <laughs> and I don't know if his his uh, goblin friend will be there or not, but he may. Um, and there will be all sorts of people uh, beyond that. Those are the most important ones, but there will be a lot of people there. Um, and the purpose of this uh, gala is just to, you know, celebrate the town. And I think the Carillos are really trying to put forth a, a best effort to keep everyone's minds off of this grave digger fever and rumors of Testiba and, and sort of, um, no, well, that's what I think. Well, that, that is what's happening. That's why they're doing it. They, they really just want to have some happy times again. They're really good people, mm -hmm. but 
If there's anywhere to get information, that is going to be the place. Okay. It's a. It's going to be a good culmination of a lot of people. Unicquad, welcome back. Hello. Now, we were just discussing, uh, everyone sort of gathered back at Master Lee Soto's Temple to Bosner, um, mm -hmm. collaborated on their notes of the night. Bobbins went and talked to the Talls, Sanfara Malova, and found out mm -hmm. about Tesh Tiba, and um, he found out about Baxter, the jester. Um, and you guys found out about the goldfin soup, most importantly. Uh, mm -hmm. You saw the statue, a monument to um, three girls and some men that were lost to Tashtiba. Um, and um, you found Cinderbloom Tower. Uh oh. I. I we nope. Lose him again? I just see Bobbin's making choices. Um, oh. And so, uh, <laughs> um, uh, you you took those three books from the the uh, Cinderbloom Tower. You you took um, um, the names of those books were. Spells for spells against spells boys. for the initiated, war spells for mm -hmm. wars, and spells against boys. Mm -hmm. And you also saw the brawler yep. boys hang out. Yep. Um, I also did take one of those uh, one of the wooden wands, which I don't know the magical properties. That's right. I uh, didn't mm -hmm. really. Yeah. But I just still have that. And uh, so I was asking Blanche if she is planning on going in her full armored garb, as she is, as is. And she said, hells to the yes. So <laughs> you know that this is a very fancy gala. She will be in her wood elf, as woody as she gets. How do you mm -hmm. approach, well, how will you be going to the gala? Um, well, I think it might make sense if I were to dress up a little bit. I mean, I'm pretty trashy as it is as a hermit. Um, but I think that would work because then if I have a ranger, um, you know, they, they could pretty much be like, uh, maybe some hired protection because, you know, I'm visiting in the area. And so, you know, wanted to make sure that I have some protection there. So are you... Are you guys going to feign that Blanche is a ranger? Yeah, well, I guess, I, well, not necessarily a ranger, but just some kind of armored protection, I guess. Because I think, I, I feel like it would be weird, um, you know, if we both went in, with, with armor, even though it's light armor. You know, I mean, but again, we are adventurers, so it might just are, make are sense. Are you wearing armor? Uh, it's he wears leather armor, light armor. Actually, I don't even think it's. I don't. I don't know. It might be just padded armor. Let's see, because it's light. Crossbow, leather armor. Yeah, yeah. I have leather armor right now. Um. So I mean, yeah. I guess you know. Uh, I guess while we're talking about it, um, Udaquad, uh, he's going to kind of, um, do you think it, you know, do you, Blanche, do you think it's going to be a good idea to go as adventurers as herself? Or should I go find some, because I'm, I'm assuming I have to go buy clothes. I didn't bring any with me. Right. Well, I, I, well, I was asking about that before you got back on and, and uh, because there's nowhere to borrow clothes, I didn't want to go purchase clothes just for <laughs> the thing. So um, I think I'm just going to be true to myself and wear what I have. And then, you know, to rep represent my my wood elfness, I'll put some, you know, uh, wildflowers in my hair. And that will be my way of uh, being fancy. Okay. Getting dressed there. Yeah. Okay. Maybe she to get the, I don't know, maybe we should take these fins that I collected from our soups and 
make a necklace. <laughs> Ooh, that would be good. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Oh, man. You know, Udukwad just getting the gold and rubbing it on his face. Um, yeah. So, yeah, you know, I guess Udukwad's going to just, you know, being a hermit, he doesn't really you know socialize often so he's just going to kind of brush back his hair um you know whatever hair he has left um uh-huh. and you know kind of just shuffle out the dust off of his robes and um he's still going to wear his armor because you know he he does still believe that he's an adventurer so he's going to stay in his armor okay well it's about that time to go um uh Bobbins decided that he wants to uh take a long rest. So Bobbins go ahead and take your rest. And now Yanni, you are meditating so you can redo yes. your spells and Blanche and Udiquad kinda just head off. And I suppose that Hidak and Fizz are just chilling, sleeping. Mm-hmm. Okay. The gold yeah. fin. That gold fin's weighing heavy on Fizz and Hidak. So, you guys head over to the Genteel district. And let's. Okay. Where, what number is that? that is... It's on the other yeah. map, right? It's where 15. So you are in Section 8 housing, if you remember. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. So. Uh, so, yeah, you, you, um, you take the path to um, this. You take this path up um, to mm-hmm. the uh, Carrillo um, estate. Um, and, uh, you can tell that there are a lot of people, uh, that's got the invite. The music is playing loud. Um, and the, the gate is open. Um, and there is a, there's a man there, um, at the, at the house. The, so you can get in the gate just fine. It's open for everyone. And there's children everywhere playing out in the yard. Um, and you do notice that um, there's there's a... Uh, I don't know. You can't tell if it's just like a click or what. But you definitely see like a pocket of just boys and a pocket of just girls. And they both sort of... Um, as you're walking up to uh, the main house... Uh, oops, let me uh, use my little pingy tool. You're walking up to this main house here. Um, as you're walking by, you can see, you can feel their eyes on you, um, especially dressed as you are. Um, you, you definitely stand out from everybody else. Uh, they're, they're definitely dressed to enjoy this uh, elegant uh, experience. And But these kids... Um, there's a lot of kids, but there's a very specific pocket of boys and a pocket of girls, and they're eyeballing you hardcore. And there, you can it, just looking at them, you can see like they're like kind of a gasp, like oh, like you know, in wonderment, um, not fear, just kind of in wonderment. Uh, but you keep walking along, and you get up to the steps, and there's like a butler type guy, um, and he says, "Tickets, please." Um, and as you present the tickets, um, he says, um, um, he says, uh, please, uh, have what you will. The drinks and food is for free. We, we will take no money of yours and have a, have a great time. And he waves you in. This guy definitely does not have like mm. that, that accent as everyone else does. And he's sort of, uh. Sort of odd, oddball character. He's very tall, very skinny. He's definitely got the like, the, the tucks with the tails and very butlery. What you would expect to be like a butlery kind of guy, but different. He's different than the rest of the people mm-hmm. in some weird way. 
almost like he's a butler as a service and he was imported in here or something like that. Um, but uh, mm. when you walk in, um, you you immediately um, spot some people that you've you've seen before. Um, you definitely see Rita Gary um, across the room, and I should just explain that in this main air, this main room that you walk in. Um, the music is just really piped up. It's, it's, it's almost like, um, uh, just, a, a, it's like this huge estate with this big, just grand room. Um, and just one thing to, you know, it's strange, right? You're in this swamp land that's kind of like gross based on that boardwalk you walk on. And here you're in this seemingly like mansion or a state house with this huge grand room. There's loud piano type music. It's loud. People are talking. They're dressed nice and fancy. There's waiters walking around with, um, you know, glasses of wine for you to just grab off of their tray. There's appetizers free rolling. You do see Rita Gary across just talking. Um, give me a perception check, both of you. Hmm. Perception. Okay. Come on, you quad. Good. Don't be don't be <clears> dense. Very good. <laughs> oh nice. Okay. Uh, Bobbins is assassinating okay. something. Just kidding. Okay. <laughs> I am not assassinating. Uh Blanche, you're you're very <laughs> caught up in the, in the moment and the music, and this is probably something that you're just you you, you haven't really been used to seeing or involved with in your life so far this is that you're caught up in the uh mm. the um the stimulation of it all and and you um although although, He's although a this isn't, so, isn't really your scene either um you just happened to glance fort and hera um he was totally eyeballing you in like uh, what the fuck are you doing here? Sort of look, and just as you mm-hmm. make eye, like catch eyes with him, he looks away and and kind of disappears into the crowd. Oh, um, wow! And and you know maybe you're feeling a little paranoid, but it certainly you certainly had that feel of like distaste that you are here at this thing that he he was certain that you wouldn't be in town anymore. Who, that was who Fort was that? Yeah, he was the uh, he's the um, the guards uh, the person that runs the guards. The watch is what they're called. Mm-hmm. You also you um, also notice okay um, uh, uh, Sanfer, one of the halflings, um, and and it's not so much that you notice her as much as you hear her. Um, going on and on and and being like the loudest person at least within the vicinity of you she's just yapping out loud very loud um Mm -hmm. but as you're kind of taking it all in uh rita gary comes up to you um she sort of like ends her conversation she says oh my goodness well welcome welcome how are you Hey Rita, it's been all right. Sorry, uh, sorry for the tire, but as you know, my f- my friend here and I are uh, adventurers, and so we try to uh, spruce up as best as us adventurers could. But looks like you have quite a gathering today. This oh evening. yes, I'm so glad you're here. I know you had to travel hard just getting that rose whistle to us, and we do appreciate that. I know Master Lee Soto's working on that that uh, tincture that he's working on for the children. We're just, we're just glad to have you. And, and please, just partake in all the fun here. Don't worry about your attire. It doesn't matter much. Great. Well, as you can see, my uh, friend Blanche here did go ahead and decorate her hair with some ceremonial and flowers. you do look beautiful, <laughs> Miss Blanche. You do look beautiful. But please, eat some food. 
<laughs> we have all the fixings here. And if you've never had some goldfin, oh, we got it all kind of goldfin. We got some bacon wrap goldfin. We mm. got goldfin soup. We have <laughs> goldfin on a stick. Oh, it's good. Now, you're not going to get any Excellent. of them fins. All oh, them boys make sure they <laughs> pluck that off right away, you hear? <laughs> yes, I actually, me and a couple of our other adventurers had some goldfin soup at your tavern here. And it was quite delicious. And they explained to us about the goldfin in processing mm -hmm. those. So I could see that. Well, I will probably help myself to a drink if you don't mind. Absolutely. I gotta, in the meantime, this swap sound is annoying me. <laughs> uh, Blanche is going to get some uh, of the hors d'oeuvres in that. Okay. From the nice. from the buffet table. Nice. <laughs> You make Udaquad look like a drunk. He's always just drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if I can find me some good music for this rendezvous. Uh, let's see. <laughs> let's do a little... Hmm. How's this one sound? No. So, um, so you walk around and, and you, uh, you, you're having some of those hors d'oeuvres and you, you find this fish to be quite tasty. Um, and, um, you know, as, as you're walking around, uh, um, <clears throat> uh, Blanche, um, you, uh, you, you feel like a, a tug, a tug on your clothing. Excuse me. Excuse me. And and you look down and um, there there's mm -hmm. this there's a girl. And she says, "Hi. You you're, who are you? And 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 you're you're not part of our town, are you? Are are do you live here? I've never seen you before. Do you have children? Are they here?" Uh, no, my name is Blanche and, and me and my friends were just passing through here. Oh, are you an adventurer? Uh, yes. Wow. What kind of stuff do you do? Well, I love exploring and I like to create the maps so then people have a reference and when they travel oh that's awesome do you do any magic and she sort of like whispers uh um so at that point i i um i do produce flame and make a little flame out of the palm of my hand <gasps> oh my oh my gosh oh my gosh oh my gosh you have to join my group. We're the Magic Matrons. I represent the Magic Matrons, and and I'm the I'm the president of the group. And my name is Maggie Cinderbloom. Would you like to join our group? Oh, it sounds like a fun group, but um, you know, I'm with an adventuring group, and we don't stay in certain places for a long time. Oh, well, um, well, well, please. But it sounds but, interesting. But, but, but it would be really, really cool if if you could just join us for a little bit, and and we can do, um, we could do uh, uh we could battle against the, those brawler boys. It would be really fun. Please, mm. please, please, please. Um, well, I wanted to get some more information about um, what this illness is 
is going on with the children. Oh my gosh. Do you know anything about it? I gotta go. It? I gotta go. Oh. And she, and she like totally like runs off. Um, just as like, um, uh, this, you see like, she like takes off in the direction and like a boy comes running in, like kind of like looking around at like, he's looking for her. And, um, mm-hmm. and, uh, and Uticquad, uh, you, you get the same sort of, uh, tug, uh, and, and it's this boy. He says, uh, sir, uh, sir, sir. Well, you must be pretty short if you're tugging on my hey. coat. What can I help you with? Well, um, <laughs> you look like you could be an adventurer. Are you an adventurer? I guess you could say that. I thought so. If you so. think of... <laughs> you well, thought so? Well, you look different than everybody else, and I just think you look awesome. Well, yeah. thank you. That's because I don't shower half the time, and I live you in the woods. You look like a kind of guy... <laughs> Who needs to join a group? And I've got just the group for you. We're called the Brawler Boys. And oh, I would love nice. for you to go through our initiation and join our group. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to battle the Magic Matrix. What do you say? Hmm. Well, when is this can initiation? I, I think I can count you in. And guess what I'll do? I'll give you the first payment just in case any kind of like flings you a coin and as you catch it you see it's like this like wooden like coin like fake coin mm. oh, oh very nice I, is this like a a little kid yeah it's mm-hmm. the it's the kid that was that the girl ran away from mm-hmm. yeah well thank you so this is a form of payment for joining the brother boys yeah, is it? we get all the gold and those nice. magic matrons are going down, if you know what I mean. We're going to take them out. We're going to have the Battle Royale. Nice. It'll be the battle that ends well, all battles. And I I would really love, it would be really cool. By the way, you know, I didn't even tell you what my name is. My name is Pod. Yeah. Pod. Very nice. Very <laughs> nice. Well, Pod... With all this uh, malarkey going on about that word? Well, kids what's like that your... Word on? I never heard of malarkey. I'm telling you, it's going to be a battle royale. Hmm, nice. And when, it, when is the battle royale? Are you guys still planning? Oh, yeah. We got a plan. We got we to gotta, we gotta recruit. We got initiations. And, you know, and then when we do it, we are going to do it at a special place. But I can't tell you here... Because, and he kind of like looks around, because Fort and Hera won't like it too much. I got, we're going to do, we're going to have a showdown uh, at a mm. special, special place. The grandest showdown. Hmm. Nice. Well, when is your next meeting? So I make sure that we can get all this initiation planned and we can uh, plan a little bit better on your secret location. Meet us tomorrow at the hangout. At the hangout. Very cool. Okay. I think I passed a place. Is it? Is it a tree That's right. covered That's right. you got, area? Oh, I gotta go. Be there tomorrow. All right. Mm. And Excellent. he like he like goes and tomorrow. off. Just then. See a pod. Uh, as he's running off. Um. Um, so, uh, this half elf, um, uh, man and woman come up to you guys. Uh, excuse me. Have our children been bugging you guys? Not at all. They're just being adventurous. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. How do you, so, do you know about their, their little clubs that they're part of? Oh, well, you know, they, these kids be kids. They're just playing now. The Magic Matrons Absolutely. and the Brawler Boys. Kids be kids. That's what they do. Well, That's you right. know, leave it to Pod and Maggie. Just drumming up their drama. 
It's all it's all for fun. Mm. It's all for fun. Very he, good. He, he, have he, he looks like, he's like, you know, have you been initiated yet? And he gives you a, a wink. <laughs> well, that's the plan at this point. Pod was quite convincing. Well, I don't think they'll hurt you any. He kind of says it loud enough to like, you know, kind of play along with Pod in case he's listening. Mm. Yeah, I would agree. So, you know, I just can't help but ask as parents, I've never had something that I cared about that deeply, but are you are you worried about this grave diggers? Do you Ooh, no, that's I mean a sore, I have to imagine that you topic. Of course we're worried here. Mm. Absolutely. It's sort of random it is. Don't know what's causing that. Right. So how do you protect Pod well, and Maggie just from to keep this? A close eye on them. Now, a lot of people have been locking their kids up in their rooms at night. It happens at nighttime, you see. They they come out. Um, mm. Some kids mm. in the urban district, as what I heard, are gone missing now. now. I haven't seen any missing children up here in the genteel. But, uh, yeah, everyone's kind of worried about that. Now, the other thing they've been saying, too, is that some children have been going into the sewers. I don't know. I don't know what's sewers. going on there. They're, hmm. they're losing to the going down in the sewers or something. And uh, and you know I've heard that they're digging these things up with their hands and net and fingers. And uh, some some have actually gone mm-hmm. with the shovels. So it's not quite just hands and fingers. So I don't really know what's going on. Some uh, they say it's in the trance. They're in a trance. Some are getting some tools. Some are doing it with their hands. I don't know why. And some have gone into sewers. Maybe. But we don't really know. Mm. Mm. It is Super interesting. And, uh, and what is your name, sir? My, my name is uh, Jean-Quil Cinderbloom. <laughs> Cinderbloom. And those yeah. are my, those are my Excellent. children. Excellent. Well, Mr. There. That was uh, Paul and Maggie Cinderbloom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's and what's, right. And what's your name, good sir? So, you, you. Are... Well, my name is Udukot Iskew. That's an interesting name. You sound like you belong here in the marsh. <laughs> well, I am a hermit, and I do oh, live in the woods. Oh, we all have hermits in a way. <laughs> we all have all things we hermit over. I like to find myself a nice cozy and just be on my lonesome. Now, that's a form of hermit, right? <laughs> that is right. Well, and then my uh, associate here. Yes. Yes. Um. So I'm Blanche. I'm uh. I'm also uh with the adventuring group, and um, I have a lot of questions about this mysterious mm. uh, illness that's been going around i mean i see all these children running around here you know aren't you worried that they might catch the, the disease from as, as, one as another like, as you're you're um talking to him is he's sort of like distracted and he's like gives his like one finger to somebody hold on uh what well, i'm sorry about mm-hmm. that now you said something about con- uh somebody catching it is that is that what you said there well, uh, of course. Yeah. Now, I, we don't know what it is, or how we don't know how to prepare. Now, Master Lee Soto did send for you all. This is why I heard they bring all of that rose whistle, and hopefully that will do something. Uh, but, but uh, yes, mm-hmm. us adults are very nervous because what will happen if we all catch it? Then we're all in a heap of trouble. Not not to play it lightly with mm-hmm. the children and all, but if us adults catch it, <clears> why well, I don't know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I would be more nervous about the children catching it because they're, you know, much smaller humans than the adults are. Uh, the children. Well, yes, but we don't know who... 
Who's the source? That's the problem we face. Yeah, Mr. Cinderbloom, I see, I see how that is very uh, difficult for this town, indeed. Um, you mentioned they go into the sewers. Do you, do you know if they are, are digging around to get to these sewers? Uh, well, I don't really know, and that's not confirmed. That's just, that could just be a story. Hmm. It could be. Do you know, in, in the urban district, um, is there a sore that maybe it's rumored the kids are tending to or are escaping off into? I know, that's a good question, and I'd have to... <clears throat> I'd have to say that somewhere probably in the in the urban district somewhere. Now uh, let me let me think on that for a while, and I I, I I do don't I do apologize. I don't want to be rude here, but I'm being kind of cold over here. I don't have all the information for you, but Fort Hera he seems to know a whole lot. He'd be a good source. He knows a whole lot, and he's keeping our town safe. You hear? <clears throat> Mm -hmm. I bet he does. Well, Cinderbloom, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Make sure you get yourself a refill. Enjoy well, the thank night. Thank you, you too. <laughs> he he kind of bounds off in the direction that um, the other person was um, um, waving a hand at him. <clears throat> okay. Um, You are you guys partaking in drink and food still? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I need you both to give me a constitution. Oh great! Oh, uh, I knew this was gonna be like <laughs> time to get or drunk. <laughs> Uh, just do a kind of do it's check. not poison Cuts, or just straight check. Okay. Uh. Holy moly! <laughs> Udaquad just drinks all day. That's what he does. <laughs> oh, oh my oh, gosh! Go ahead. Oh, but drunk 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 day. Day. <laughs> oh God! So, um, <laughs> do I have? I, I don't have hold person spell or something. So I'm like, stand the corner. So, <laughs> so as as you guys sort of wrap up that conversation uh, with Jean Quill, um, uh, Blanche, you're starting to feel a little like. You're not feeling drunk so much as you are feeling a little lightheaded, but not like in a drunk way. Something, something else. It's something else, and, and you're definitely feeling the effects of of something. Um, mm. But uh, anyway, <clears throat> uh, so um, as you guys are kind of. Um, moseying around uh you notice that there's another room where there's like a dance floor and people are dancing um and the music is seemingly louder and uh there's there's a bard <clears throat> who's who's sort of like really livening up the the music like when you walked in the music was sort of just sort of you know chill and just it was loud but it was mellow and now it seems more jolly and aggressive and like getting people going and um uh a couple people join in with various instruments and people are like pounding and just just rocking the house um and as you're kind of taking it all in there uh rita gary comes up or not rita gary uh sonfer comes up to you guys and um she says, well, wait, look who we got here. Where's, where's that old Bobbins? Mm. He, did he get too <laughs> drunk? 
how 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 is that old boy? Yeah, I bet he is. Oh, I slipped him a good drink or two. We'll call it five. Oh, that boy. (laughs) Now, I thought he could hold it in better than that, but apparently he's got to take a nappy too. Nappy too. Oh, my goodness. Well, how are you? Well, it's going well. Glad to see you here. Yeah, everything's good. Thank you for inviting us. As you're talking, us. Blanche, she sort of looks at you and she's like, are you okay? Your eyes are getting a little wobble wobble. Oh, I think I uh, just need to watch what I'm drinking um, here. Give me another constitution. <sighs> Both or just, uh, just Blanche? Blanche at this point. Okay. Okay. Is it supposed oh, no, to wait? It's uh, it's supposed not a save. Oh, you're yeah. Well, you did if, a save. If, are you you're just click- not proficient in it, so it probably doesn't even matter. Okay. Okay, so I did a regular. Either way, it doesn't matter. You okay. rolled fine. And she's like, "Well, right, you all. So, how did you two find your way into this party?" Well, we were delivering the rose whistle to Master Lee Soto, as you're, as and you're talking, he managed. Claude, you feel mm-hmm. as if like something just like flipped your ear, like mm. it was like mm. super painful and super distracting. Hmm. Oh, oh, oh! I apologize you about right. that. Sometimes I uh, pick up this energy, I guess. I don't know. Strange. Strange evening. Mm-hmm. Um, but we uh, managed to get some invites um, because Master Lee Soto was not able to attend this evening. He was so invigorated and excited about the rose whistle that he wanted to start working on that cure for your mm-hmm. grave digger problem. Well, somebody's going to have to work on a cure of that Teshtiba problem. Oh, Teshtiba. Yes, um, the fountain. He actually visited that location earlier today. Is... You said the Teshtiba problem? I'm not convinced she's dead. I mean, it has been seven years, but, you know, I don't remember ever seeing a a hanging body like they claimed. Hmm. So this demon hag might still be alive. Yeah, come on. What is this craziness happening with these poor children? That's very true. It's it's rumored to be an illness, as well, you know. I'm you sure. know, there was a man, and I told Bobbins all about this, this man Baxter. He was the jester here. And, yeah, mm, Baxter. And, him and uh, Fort and Hera had a, had a problem, and Fort and Hera said he was trafficking in humans, which he may or may not have been. But he got mm. run out of town, and Teshtiba was his friend. Oh, a friend of a demon hag. Was Teshtiba always a demon hag, or did this something happen during... Well... You said Baxter was friends with, with well, Shiba? She came to... She she uh, she would show her uh, her oddities at his, his, his place, at his carnival. So... They were good friends. He, she brought in a lot of money. So, yeah. But, you know, hmm. when those boys raided on her place, they said that he was <sighs> with them uh, in the hanging. So, hmm. now that was seven years ago. Hmm. But... I just, I just have a doubt or two, right? It's one of those things. Unless you've seen it, how could you believe it? 
That is true. Where did they? Where did they supposed hang? Well, they all did that at her at... hovel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. take that old hag oh, road out there and go check it out. But there's nothing there. There's no noose there. There was never no body there. And no grave. No, there was no grave, and they said they left a body there. And 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 this in Baxter is supposedly the one who led this execution, but I don't believe that happened. Mm-hmm. Mm, I see. How could you hang a friend? Now, have you heard the story about what happened? You see that old boy over there? No. And she points to this, this, this guy who just sort of looks like kind of a loner. That's old Gus Sam. Now, that old Gus Sam, he, he, uh, he wanted a position with the casters. You know, the casters are who runs this town. And so he wanted a position with them casters. And so he taught, he made some sort of a deal with Tashtiba because she made all kind of promises. She was the kind of person where well, nobody had never had no real issues with her so much. But they, she was the kind of person that people would, on a, on a last chance effort, try and bring their problems to her and she will make them promises and do some sort of magics. Right? You understand what I'm trying to say here? And so, he, this is the story, he propositioned her to get a, to get a seat at the table. And so, she, and you notice that, uh, um, She's sort of looking around to see if anybody's listening. Um, and uh, so she she said to him that he had to promise his three most prized possessions. Mm-hmm. Now, what you think he thought? Mm. He thought it was going to be his boats because he had three boats, each one named his daughter's name. But guess what happened? He made that deal. But it wasn't his boats that went missing. It was his daughters. That's right. Hmm. So those are his children and the fellow. Oh, yes, indeedy. So what happened then? Well, he, he got a group together and he went there. He went right there to her place. Now, what they said was that when they went into her hovel, they found that those three girls were being transformed into hags like a coven. Mm -hmm. But there was other oddities there, all those strange monsters she would bring to that carnival. So he went to kill her and... Uh, you know, they said some weird things after that. Now, some of this is fantastical. If you ask me, I can't believe any of this stuff because I never seen no Tashtiba do crazy stuff like this. Maybe she make a uh, something to drink for the medicines and you know that hoodoo voodoo stuff, but nothing like this. Now, they said there was something, some sort of abominations there. Some had a hundred miles. And they said something about some weird... Now, this one's funny. An uh, alligator with lobster claws. Now, that's just how right crazy, right? They said that and some other things. Now, the story goes that, he, that when, when Gus saw his, his girls turning into hags, well, he, uh, he, he got a little scared, and his one daughter, Rosalind, attacked him. And uh, he had to fend her off and threw her at one of the abominations, and the abominations ended up killing his daughter, Rosalind. 
and uh, he ran out the hovel, and then he went back in. And you know what he did? He had, he had to do what he thought he had to do, and he killed his other daughters. And the rest of the boys, they killed, they killed old Tashtiba. Now that's what they say. And they said that hunger right there. And they said that Baxter led that hanging. Now, this was seven years ago, right? And since then, well, now we've got Fulton Harrow. And he's held up with his end of the bargain with the security, so they said, now nah, I don't really like him too much, but, well, I guess he's finding stuff to do, securing our places. But, uh, you know, he had that problem with the human trafficking in Baxter. Now, here's the thing. This is more recent with the Baxter, and he chased that guy out of town, and now we got a problem. Now we got Grave Digger. So you tell me what's going on. Is it Baxter? Is it Tash Teba? Something's up. That's all I got to say about that. And where is uh, Baxter today? He said that Fortin ran him out of town. Don't know. Blanche, give me another constitution. <laughs> Ooh, somebody get this girl some food. <laughs> so, Blanche, you start feeling a little, like, weak. Like, you can't, like, even stand there anymore. Like, you you, you kind of, like, do, like, one of those, like, I'm leaning to the wall that isn't where you thought it was <laughs> exactly. And you're, like, really awkward. Oh, and, like, okay. okay. I know that feeling. <laughs> like, you're just not feeling right. Oh, you uh, gotta do something about old Blanche here. She she's not. Yeah, I guess I should go like sit down. She's not somewhere. looking too good there, you know. I'll catch up with y'all later. Now give Bob and the old what for, will ya? I will. I'll <laughs> make sure to share some uh, some good old mud with him. Now I'll write it in. Thank you. <sighs> okay, so I'm gonna kind of look at Blanche. I'm going to look at her. I'm going to mm-hmm. say, Blanche, are you doing okay? Uh, I mean, uh, the drinks are kind of strong you, here. You feel another one yeah, of those like, I don't know what... the ear feelings. <laughs> <laughs> Blanche, have you, have you been feeling anything? Kind of any flicking, touching of, you uh, know? I can't even feel my lips right now. <laughs> Dang. Um, so I think I need to uh, <laughs> go somewhere. Mm. So when after I kind of after she tells me that, you know, she kind of needs to go lie or sit down somewhere, I'm going to kind of just look around the room to see if I can, you know, find anybody concentrating on on me or looking in my direction. Okay. Give me a uh, perception check. You don't really, you look around and it, you know, it, just, it seems like everyone is really caught up in the music and, and nobody's really paying attention to you. You don't really mm. get the, the feeling that um, anyone has any sort of uh, particular focus on you and sort of the draw of, of you being dressed as you were and new to this, to everybody here that seems to have worn itself off. You sort of... Mm. Just, you know, do nothing special in this crowd. Okay. Well, let's see. We're going to go uh, make our way over because I think Gus was sitting down somewhere. Um, I'm going to go ahead and walk over there, find a chair, ask Blanche if she wants to sit down okay. there nearby. Give me a dex check with disadvantage, Udaquad. Let's see. 
All right. So a dex, just a mm -hmm. regular dex check. Ooh. <laughs> so you start walking over to um, to Gus, and out of nowhere, you totally trip, and your wine just <laughs> flies out. Oh my gosh! And like, nice. You seriously felt like that was that. Um, you get to feel like I didn't. What did I trip on? Right, like th that was not natural. It was an unnatural sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But maybe your your ego okay. was hit a bit. But um, the you see like butlers and servers like kind of um, attack the um, the spill of wine on this nice ornate rug that um, that you were standing over, and they go to work, and everyone's just like. You know, make ooh, sort of. Good <laughs> <laughs> just going to kind of pick himself up, now, look around. You two are starting to become a little bit of a spectacle because Blanche is sort of wobbly and you definitely just spilled. So you are, you guys are looking odd and you're definitely standing out now. So if you wanted to do your perception check now to see if people are looking at you, I would say everybody's looking at you. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, so I'm just gonna kind of wave and be like, "The party's good. Party's no. good." It's not long before like, you know, all you know, everything kind of fades back into the background, and and you make your way over to Gus, and he's just sort of he's not like mopey or anything. He's just kind of like has like a eh, I'm just here because I should be here sort of vibe. Mm. Okay. Um, so is is he sitting at a table, or are we sitting yeah, down? He's, he's he's not even like, sitting. Is he's he like sitting? Kind of just standing. Yeah, standing. Okay. All right. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of <sighs> walk over and uh, kind of stand where he stands and just look over and attempt to make simple talk and just be like, "Well, it's a great evening tonight, isn't it?" He he kind of looks at you and says, "Well, if you sit so." Hmm. Well, I would think so. You're you're a local, right? You you seem to be pretty uh, dressed up and prepared for today. It's an interesting conversation you're trying to have with me. Is there something you need to know? Not quite. Yeah. Just trying to get to know the the locals. I'm uh, me and my friend here uh, are visitors, and we're just kind of. Getting to know the local flair mm -hmm. a little bit. Well, I'm local. Yep, you caught me right. Very nice. And and uh, what do you? What is your job? I know we have a lot of fishermen that's, that's, here. I, uh, I run you guys some boats. Have yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Ah, so you must be a caster, is what they call them, correct? I'm part of the casters. Yep. Mm -hmm. Secretary. Oh, mm -hmm. very good. Secretary. Excellent. Well, bet that was quite a uh, robust application you had to fill out. Are you trying to be a member? Yeah, I had some interest. I uh, tend to usually not flock to civilization, but how, you know, how, how, how did your membership come to be? Hmm. You're not from around here, I understand. That's correct. Don't let my path to this group be an example for yourself. Find your own way. Mm, very true. Very true. Well, I guess that's great. I mean, it seems like there's a lot of uh, interesting stories here to be told in this town alone um but you know i'm over helping father uh lee soto out with your guys grave digger problem so you know that's kind of what brought us here me and my friend blanche here um you know just kind of taking a look he's around like totally know. just you could tell that he's not in the conversation that you're in mm. like he's he's yeah. looking in your direction well, but he's sort of just not really paying attention to what you're saying at all. Right. Okay. Um, so, you know, just helping out Master Lee Soto. And, uh, you know, on that side of the urban district, there's this really 
wonderful statue of three little girls. Just such a great plaque on that statue there. Now I've had enough. <sighs> Excuse me, sir. Okay. And he uh, uh, sort of just walks off. Okay. So as he's walking off, I'm gonna awaken mind. <laughs> oh, this is gonna go well. <laughs> it seems to go well when Ukwa does it, and he's just gonna say, uh, he's just gonna tell her, tell him as he's walking away, and just kind of say, "I can help you with your Tashtiba problem if you need." I know. I don't know. I might be asking too much there, but <laughs> I'm gonna have some work in the near uh, future. <laughs> what? So as he's walking away, he stops and just okay. and like, then as he, he stops, his I'm back just, his uh, back is too okay. Weird. He just sort of stops. Okay. Um, and he like just sort of he like shakes his head. And then just continues to walk. <laughs> oh. All right. Well, it's okay. We can hang out with Gus later. So I guess at this point, I th we have a lot. I feel like, you know, I'm going to tell Blanche, um, you know, I, I've collected a lot of good information. And, you know, you've kind of collected some, too, from, you know, some of our local friends here. Or mm -hmm. Give me a alum. constitution saving uh, throw. Oh, oh shit. Before Blanche dies. Oh, oh nice. Finally. Nice. You're starting okay. to feel better. <laughs> okay. Oh, good. All right. Okay. Good. All right. So um, I, I think we should probably, you know, head back to Master Lee Soto's and uh, call it a night. And we can inform the rest of the group about what we've uh, discussed um, today. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sounds good. All right. So then Udaquad's leaving and he's just telling everybody good evening, goodbye, great party, wonderful. Goes up to Rita, gives her a high five. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> <laughs> the equivalent of a high five. Okay. So as you guys are leaving, making yourself uh, going through the that like courtyard, you see all the kids and. Um... Make sure I see Fortin in there and wave bye. You know, you don't see Fortin. Not since ah, that first time. Okay, but you do ah, you, you do see um, you do see Link, the goblin, uh, and he's pretending to be a monster, um, playing with the kids. And so like, ah! and he's like chasing after the kids and stuff, and uh, you do see Pod as well, and he's like, don't forget, and. Um, that's right, Pod. Scary monster you have there. And, uh, Maggie runs up to you, Blanche, and gives you a hug. Says, "We're all, we're we're always available to join us. Come to our tower." Oh, where's the tower? It's in it's it's in the urban district. Shh! Don't tell anyone. Oh. You'll see it. It's a tower. It says Cinderbloom Tower. Okay. Bye. Hi. Um, and then you know she she runs off, and and then you see Link sort of like stop, notice you guys, and then continue on. Being a monster. Okay, it's like good. I was like, don't let him say anything. <laughs> I chop off his head. <laughs> I was about to awaken mine and, and, and you know ridicule from being such a tiny monster for you these know, the kids. The only problem with your awakened <laughs> mind is nobody knows you're doing it, except for you. No, no, that's it. <laughs> it's just your own little uh, fun. And everyone's just sort of confused by it. Except for uh, fishmen. The fishmen. All right, yeah. so uh, you make your way back to Master Lee Soto. You find that the group is sleeping. Mm -hmm. Um... So uh, you uh, take it all in, and um, I suppose you go to sleep yourselves. And on the morn, uh, Master Lee Soto um, 
gathers you all to a common area for, and he's got um, food and drink, <sighs> and he's and um, he says, "So, how did the gala go?" Uh, well, good, but I think I drank a little bit too mm. much. <laughs> Well, as long as you got some information, were you able to talk to anybody? Uh, yes, I was invited to uh, this little girls club called, what was it called? The Mage, Magic Mage or something? <laughs> Magic Matrons. Magic Matrons. Yes. Okay. Well, I was hoping you'd get a little more information. And but, then... I mean... Uh, she got really, really drunk. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, so um, the magic matrons and brawler boys are uh, a couple of interesting characters that we might want to interview for for their information, uh, Master Lee Soto. But what we actually really were able to come up with is um, the statue of the three girls is actually the children of Gus, who is a caster. And it is rumored that he worked with Tashtiba, the demon hag, to give him that position. And mm. in result of that, she demanded that she take his three children. Well, that's interesting. I did not know that. Yes. So um, upon talking to Gus, he seemed to not want much about it. Mm. Um I did try to convince him to uh, maybe assist him with the issue, but he wasn't interested. Now, why it would still be an issue is because it's supposed that the hag Tishtiba was never found, the body at least, and it, the, the whole hanging of Tishtiba was led by Baxter, the jester, who's a friend of Tashtiba. And there's a bit of some interest that the hag Tashtiba is still alive. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, that is interesting. Yeah. And apparently I'm being initiated into the Brawler Boys today. <laughs> okay. Well, that is kind of funny. Now, <clears throat> I wonder if I should make a, a house visit to old Gus. Hmm. Well, he's if you know Gus well enough to have understood that that was his issue, it probably suggested. Um, I know that you here are the person... Um, you know, for prayer and meditation and such. Um, but he definitely uh, had nothing to talk about the situation. So I don't know if it's um, obviously painful. From what I hear, losing children is terrible. Well, I'm, I'm sure that he's dealing with things in his own way. And he certainly, at least since I've been here, he's never been here. Um, I might just pop over and I won't mention anything about anything other than just having a a tea. They like to do that here. Very good. And if you do end up speaking about his girls, I would ask if they had the same symptoms of these children of today with the grave diggers. Mm -hmm. Illness. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. That is a good question. Well, you guys have proved mighty useful so far. So, what's the next plan of action? Well, I need to make it onto my initiation to the Brawler Boys, and I believe the matrons wanted to meet Blanche at their uh, tower there. Mm -hmm. And so, I, I, I think if, if Bobbins... And Leoni, if you guys wanted to come and join with, I'm pretty sure the Magic Matrons would love to meet. Um, what is what is it? Uh, a high elf? Yes. 
Okay. I don't know you elf types very well. <laughs> um, I mean, they like to hang out with trees, so. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> and while Hedok is, uh, is missing uh, from a player perspective, he is at the table. And uh, you notice that um, he's, he's looking a little different, and he's certainly feeling a little different. Um, is he, uh, does he have the grave digger? Uh, no. Uh, but his skin looks a little crustacean like. Looking a little mm. different. A floop doogle is starting to transform oh to his true God. self. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But anyway, that's all I'll say about that for now. Okay. Hey, I think I need to um, sign off. Oh? Yeah. Just, I'm like done for today. <laughs> okay. So that so party and can, wine. Yeah. Well, um, can you just say that I'm like doing something? You're doing something. I'm doing something <laughs> else. All right. <laughs> just being initiated to the matron mothers or <laughs> the mag magic matrons. Or whatever. <laughs> All right. Matron Sorry. mothers. <laughs> yeah. You know, whatever. <laughs> Uh, All right. Nice. All right. See you guys. Matt. See ya. I hope so. So, what do you want to do? <laughs> yes.
Okay. So. So you're bouncing. Okay. <clears throat> Okay. Okay. Um, so you're heading down. Uh, you're heading. Oh, shoot. All right, so you're heading down this way, this path. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, so you get to <clears throat> the Brawler Boys uh, hangout, and um, you know you you see you see them there, and they're all like, "Oh, wait, are you guys all together, or did you go separate, Bobbins?" Okay. Um, so yeah, so you're back to like those, those bushes, um, and you see the signs out outside of it says, uh, "Brawler Boys Fighters Guild, no mages allowed." Um, and you see you see like a whole bunch of weird little signs like that. Um, and Nelyani, what are you doing? Okay, so so Pod comes out. And he's like, "Oh hi, did you come for your initiation?" And um, and he he eyeballs Nelliani. Oh, but you didn't bring her, did you? There's no magic allowed here. Well. You're probably one of us, a brawler boy. She's not allowed. Nope. Can't do it. And he, and he like bars the entrance with his wooden sword and wooden shield. She can't come. You she can she can join the magic matrons if she wants. But she's not on our side, that's for sure. She probably does way too much magic. I'm Pod, don't you remember me? Maha! I knew you were smart. Awesome idea. And, and he's like, they're over at the Cinder Bloom Tower. Hang on one second.
Whoa, you're already burning a house down? Oh no. Yeah, so it's 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 basically like just this huge like outcropping of bushes and they sort of like made like, you know, a little hole that goes in. It's like a little fort, you know, kids fort. But it's big. It's a little mini forest there. Um, so now, Yanni, you take off to Cinderbloom Tower. What are you doing, Bobbins? Where are you off? Or oh, you're you're looking at this hideout. Oh, he is frozen. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> okay so he says are you ready for your initiation okay now here's what I need you to do and he gives you a wooden sword um, and uh, yeah Bobbins you are completely video froze buddy Oh, he can hear you. Oh. Now everything's fine. You're good now. Weird. <laughs> uh, you, you look like you were deep in thought the entire time. You're stealthing in. All right, let's see a stealth check. All right, let's do the stealth check, buddy. Let's let's see him roll a one. Oh! Did I tell you it was with disadvantage? Just kidding. Um. So yeah, you sneak in. You're fine. Um. But anyway, so uh, Pod Pod gives you the uh, this wooden sword. And he's like, okay, here's what she need to do first. And he's got his wooden sword. And he's like, I need you to make an X like this. And do it as fast as you can. Um, and he's like, okay, the next thing is, now watch how I take down these branches. And he like whacks at the bush branches and they sort of like go up and down. But nothing really breaks. He's like, can you do that? Okay. Okay. That was okay. It was pretty good. Not as good as me, but I think, I think you can handle the magic matrons. Now watch this trick and he like flips up his like sword and then like totally fumbles catching it like well no not let me no that's not that's not right and he does it again catches it can you do that if you can do that you're totally in Yeah, you're going to have to give me a dex. All right. No, do an athletics on this one. Mm -hmm. You totally catch it with grand flair. And he's just like, all right. You got this down. So we're going to have a massive battle. I told you that, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to... A forbidden zone for the for the biggest brawl to end them all. Are you okay with that? Now we have to do it in the daytime because our parents don't let us stay out too late. Right. So um, we're going to 
we're going to go over to the Smiling Jester. Yeah. We just have to make sure that Fortin doesn't see us. Oh, it's it's not too far away. I we'll show you. We'll we'll we're gonna go there in style. Um, but you're gonna need some armor. So um so he uh brings you into like his uh his little uh into the hideout. And there's like three other kids in there, including Bobbins. Give me a perception check. You totally have no idea that Bobbins is here. So, <laughs> um, so, uh, so yeah, so they, they're like kind of eyeballing you. They're like, okay, okay, and and they, um, they have some like, just some raggedy clothes, and like, okay, this is, this is gonna be your armor, and they just sort of like throw the stuff on you in a raggedy fashion. Mm hmm. Now, around this time, Nelyana, you make your way over to Cinderbloom Tower. Um, and you see a basket on the outside, and you, see, you can see and hear girls up at the top. And, and the sign on the outside of Cinderbloom Tower says, Home of the Magic Matrons, no fighters allowed. <laughs> so what do you do? There's not really a door, but there is like this this you could do a hey you guys. So um so uh uh Maggie Cinderbloom pops her head out of the tower. Not that you would know who Maggie is, but she pops her head out. Yes, how can I help you? And do you have magic? You have to prove it. I don't know. Can you do it? You you had to, I don't know what you have. That's that's not the one you want to use. Okay, so they're like, oh my gosh, and um, they uh, they use the pull, and they like come down. Oh my gosh, you have to be in battle with us. We are having a battle today to end all battles. It's it's really it's it's oh my uh and she's sort of like starstruck. Oh, I wish Blanche could have been here, but you can do this stuff too, and we totally need you. Do you wanna be a magic matron? I have all kinds of spell books. Those nasty boys stole them. So I can't give you any spells, but it looks like you might have some of your own. Okay. Well, we're just preparing our spells here, and she, like, shows you, like, these rocks. These are my spells. Aren't they cool? <laughs> so... Well, how else do you throw your spells? <laughs> oh, come on. This is this is going to be great. Look at this spell right here. It's a fireball. And and the the rock is all like painted red. 
Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna do this battle at a forbidden place. We're gonna go to the smiling jester. It's gonna be this afternoon. And guess what? Not only are we gonna take care of them boys, we're gonna get the spell books back. And we run the town. I'm s we there's no way we can lose with you. Because you have real magic. So cool! Oh my gosh! So, Bobbins. What you up to, dude? You look like a child with your armor and gear on. Okay. Mm hmm Okay. So uh so yeah, so you 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 quad and are with the boys and you Nelyani are with the girls. And um the girls um sort of like well, Maggie says, Okay, girls. Marching formation, and um, uh, so she um, starts taking. Oops, wrong place. Going from here, and she sort of like goes up and through here, and everyone's sort of like um, doing some music. They're like do 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 do. And they're just all sort of humming along to this tune that I mean you've never heard it all, ever heard it before, and they're certainly not making it up because they all are rehearsed. <sighs> and so they just sort of go on along up here, and um, and then uh, they uh, they sort of stop right there, and um, the brawler boys. Pod's like, all right, regulators, mount up. He doesn't really say that, but I really wanted to say that. Um, so uh, they they also get into a marching formation. And uh, why am I just having the worst problems with everything? Uh, and they head this way. Um... And Mr. Bobbins, I guess you're probably, what, are you tailing them like so many feet behind or something like that? Okay. Um, so what you see as like, you know, it looks like they're, they're coming, at, like the groups are just starting to come together. So um, the girls coming from this way. The boys coming from this way in what appears to is gonna be the most epic battle ever. Um Okay. So, so, uh, so Maggie says to you, Nelliani, she's like, say something cool. And, and, and Pod says to, you, as both groups are like, like, you know, facing each other, and Pod says to you, Yudaquati says, say something cool. Scare them. And they're and the boys start like banging their wooden shields with their wooden swords and and um the girls are sort of like doing the sort of hand motion that's totally not like magical
and the and the boys are like, and they start banging their their swords. Do you? Uh, what do you do, Nelyani? Say something back. Do something. Do your spells. Um, as soon as that happens, uh, the boys are like, <gasps> that's real magic. And they bolt. And, um, uh, so like the, the, the boys, like half of them, like run this way. Two of the boys run all o- over to here across this bridge. And um, you hear, like, this crashing sound. And the girls are like, We won! And um, uh, uh, you hear a lot of the boys saying, We quit! We quit! You cheated! You cheated! And um, Uniquad, you're like you're you're the only one standing there. And um you 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 guys hear like help help and uh the girls sort of like look at each other and they're like, Oh my gosh, she really did real magic and then they bolt. Oh my gosh, she did real magic and then they like totally head back towards Cinderbloom Tower. She did, and then like as as they're like chasing like those boys, they're like, "We didn't do it. She did it. They did the magic. We didn't do it. We didn't do it." Uh, so across the bridge, uh, you see a uh, um, a ramshackle sort of like building it sort of looks like a pub um <clears throat> and uh um it uh it's like in the middle of this small little island um and the bridge is pretty rickety um but it appears that uh the boys the two boys did make it across there you did hear a loud crashing sound um Two of the boys crossed that bridge. Um, <laughs> okay. So, uh, Bobbins, what are you doing? Oh, you went across the bridge too? You've made yourself known now? No. You're not known to the group. All right, then I'm going to need you. It's not nighttime. It's it's afternoon. Yeah, they remember they they're not allowed out late at night. Well, it's it's you it's 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 like afternoonish time. Um so yeah, you see, um, uh, there's there's like the cellar door that's totally broken off its hinges, and some stairs that go down. Um, and the stairs look a little bit broken too, and the boy's like, "Ah, oh, help, help! I'm hurt." Um. 
and you uh, you hear it's pretty. You, it, well, let's see, Bobbins. What are you? You don't have dark vision, do you? You don't have dark vision, so you so you can't you can't see far into it. And by now, Blanche and um, you'd quite have caught up to you, Bobbins. Oh yes, I'm sorry. Neliani and and you'd have quite have caught up to you, and uh, um, you definitely see the boys. The light is coming in from outside, so that you can't really see much past that. And uh, you hear some um, water sounds, and uh, and Pod's like, "Get me out of here! It's so it's creepy." When, when did you uh, take devil sight? Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. So I love warlocks. I just forgot that you took devil sight. Yeah, so uh, you look down in there and you see that um, uh, there's definitely like this weird little uh, outcropping of like a patch of like um, land or something. And it looks like there's a ladder that's uh, connecting to something else, but it's really hard to see past that. Um, not because of the darkness, just because of the angle of everything, but it looks like there's something deep in here. Um, you also notice that there's a sign, uh, that says, uh, smiling jester that's on the outside of this building. <clears throat> Well, you see him. He's like right at the bottom of the, like, you see him straight away. He's like, I don't think this ladder is going to work. So, and you, like, the, the, the ladder going up, the stairs going up is, is broken. It doesn't look, um, you know, maybe as in a, a, a full size, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sound rude here. As a full sized and adult human. Um, you might be able to, um, manage the ladder with, you know, as it is, but, um, right. You have rope. Sure. No. Yeah, it's it's. <laughs> you could definitely uh, toss a rope down to him. She's not very strong, though, so go ahead. Um, um, Bobbins, give me a strength check. 
Unicrod, same. Nelyani. Yep. Whoa. Minus two. She 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 rolled a crit and got a minus two. I think it's going to be the same no matter what strength save or just strength check. It's it's probably going to be the same. Modifier wise. So I'm going to say that you you pull both. Oh, we'll, we'll, we're not going to count. We're not going to count that one. We'll count. We'll count the first one. <sighs> Uh, oh! <laughs> I don't even know who this. They didn't even invite me. Okay, he pull. He managed to pull Pod up and his friend, and um, they they take a look at you and Nelyani, and they're like, oh. And they sort of like hobble. We're getting out of here. Unicrod, are you coming? Well, don't let Fortin see you. This is this place is forbidden. Yeah, we're going, we're going back. Yeah, we can make it. We're tough. We're the Brawler Boys. We're going to have another epic battle. That was not the last battle. That was just, that was, that wasn't fair even. That's not funny! And they run. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you guys are sort of thin. Yeah. 
Yep. Well, let me just, I should say, so the outside is just like, like a big pub kind of, it looks like a big pub. It's empty of anything. The cellar is on the outside and that's where kid fell into some hole. You, you get the sense that it's a little bit more than a cellar. I thought you weren't afraid of death. Okay. As you guys make it, as you guys start heading back to uh, where the rest of the group, where you left the rest of the group, um, uh, Uniquad, you, um, you, uh, you get this, just you know, you know those, uh, you know those feelings when like you think like you left the, the garage door open or the oven on or something like that. You just have like one of these weird like feelings um, and you look in your bag and those books, those, those books that were there, um, there's another book there. There's there's a book there that you don't remember grabbing. So there isn't um, <clears throat> a title per se on the book, um, but as soon as you like touch it, you have like this feeling, this like rush uh, come over you, and um, and and uh, you open it up, and inside you see a. Uh, uh, a, a writing kind of come across the pages, um, but sort of like disappear at the same time. And let me tell you, I'm going to send this to you all secret like.
All right, so you see that sort of like it writes itself, like you open the book and it writes itself across the page and disappears at the same time. And just as you finish um, reading that, um, do you remember that, that strange voice you heard in your sleep? That, that poltergeisty uh, Carol Ann calling from the TV sort of voice. You, you, you hear that again, um, and you hear that same male voice that you heard before. And it says, and it says something like, "I have no minutes now," something like that. I can't make that sound, of course. Um, and you hear like that same child voice you heard before say, "He will find the way," but all like messed up. I need you to roll 3D4. Yeah, this is while you guys are like, this is why you guys are walking back to um, Master Lee Soto's. You take 11 points of psychic damage. Welcome to level three, and that is your book. Is he gone? No. That is right. Well, you guys make it back to hoist you up, Master Lee Soto's. At this point, that's where you were heading back to, I assumed. Um, and um, and Bobbins and Eliani, you see uh, Uniquad just sort of like, Too much of that awakened mind. I think that is where we're going to end this sesh. Yep. And next session you can start right away with whatever you want to do. With a full party, hopefully. Uh-huh. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, 
Um, so yeah, so did did you uh, level up your dude? Okay. I know. <laughs> All right, so uh, you acquired. I think you already decided what spells you wanted, right? Are you still hemming and hawing about that? Oh wait, you're changing you're changing out Devil's Sight? Yeah, Oh, you can change it out for sure, but What does that one grant you? Does that give you like extra spells or something? Yeah, it gives you three more I think it's you. We're both on what? Yep. But I, I, I hear, I hear you to quad just fine. How about you, Nelyani? Uh huh. Sorry, so the 
Sure. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, we'll do it right now if you want to. No, she already did. She did, she did in the last session. So you, do you want to roll for your hit points, or do you want to take the average? Yeah. So it's going to... You have what? Plus three? Okay. All right, good night. So you're going to be 5 plus con, so you'll get 8. So you'll be 27. So you can change your hit point max to 27. But your current hit points will be 16. Did you not hear me? Did you do you hear me now? Do you hear me now? I think it. What is it? It's where the we have the worst audio problems. <sighs> Yep. Okay. So you're going to get, um, for your hit points, you're going to get... So it'll be eight, because right. I'm going to do the five. Yep. So you're, okay. you'll get 27 hit point max, but your current hit points will be 16. Am I gone again? No. No. Okay. No. All right. So, yep. And then change your level to three at the top. Now you're gone. <laughs> oh, see, that's weird. Sean. You're saying you're saying he's gone, but I can hear him. That's so weird. Uh, this is getting worse. It. <laughs> what? I mean, that's what the heck? Interesting. I don't know. It's weird. All right. So level three. And that kid battle didn't give us any XP. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, and then your current hit dice, you can change that to three. What was that one part? Your current hit dice. You say charisma? Current, current hit, hit dice. Hit dice. Hold on, hold on. It's like I hear the first syllable that's so weird. Okay, so try that again. What's the next step? Hit dice. Oh, God. It's like, now you're completely Chris, gone. Chris, yeah. Chris, can you hear me? He said yeah. hit dice. I've heard okay. it some time. So hit di okay, so hit dice is going to what? It's going to be three, yeah. Okay, so... All right, so the total is going to be three, Correct. Correct. And the current, fact, the current, the total is three. That should already be three because it changes automatic. And then the current hit dice, sh just hit the up button and it'll change it. There oh. you go. What is this one? This is three. Is there anything third level? I get the pack bone. I guess I'll just add like pack of the tome in that real quick. Um, I'll change out my devil sight to 
Book of Ancient Secrets. Um, I don't think there's anything else. Like Eldridge, I don't think Eldridge Blasts level five. Yeah. And your spells, if you go on your spell sheet, that... Um, let's see. So you've got... Uh, now you have second level spells slots. So you have... So the way the way the warlock works is that you know four four spells. But am I coming through okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the way warlock spells work is like you know four it says spells known for, but you cast all of your spells at your current spell slot level. Right, so I'm still on, uh, what do you call it, the second level, right? Well, you're just now on second level. Yeah, that's right, just going into second level. Right, so, so even when you cast things like Hex or hmm. Witch Bolt, you're casting those at second level. You don't that's have, like, different level spell slots. That's interesting. So they're different from mages in that way? Yeah, totally different. Hmm. Let's see. So you're gonna earn another spell, but all of your spells from here on will be cast at second level. Okay. So that means like so are you saying that everything need like hex, witch bolt, hellish rebuke, that needs to all move to the second sec the second? Well, no, because when you cast those, it should ask you, I think, what level you want to cast it at. Uh, maybe it doesn't. Let me see. Oh, actually, I think X only changes that third level, so that one's not going to change. Which bolt... I think the only one that goes is Eldritch Blast because I think at, at level five. Um, well, no, uh, Witch Bolt changes that level. T so when you cast Witch Bolt, the initial damage increases by one d twelve for each slot level above first. Uh, let's see. I think that one is. Let me see. Hex. Hex is increases at level three. And Hellish Blast does one. When you cast Hellish Rebuke, it'll be an additional 1d10. Mm -hmm. So your spells are going to start getting nastier. Uh, no, on the. Okay, so I guess let's see. Spell creates one beam, reach higher levels, two beams at the fifth level. Yeah, so at fifth level, the Eldritch Blast is going to start creating two beams, but. The other ones. So right now, Witch Bolt and Hellish Rebuke will do more damage. So typically, the way you know, with with wizards and stuff like you're when you cast spells at like let's say you cast a um, you're casting a first level spell, but you have second, third, fourth level spell slots. It'll you you have to you have to specify I'm casting this spell at fourth level using a fourth level spell slot, right? In your case, all of your spell slots are second level. Every spell you cast will be cast at second level, no matter what. Got it. Okay. That's why I guess on the uh, Sorcerer, they have like first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, because it gives them, they can only cast like two second level at third and, you know, Four first level spells. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So that's Got why it, it just shows you, like, yeah, you know, four spells, but you only have, like, your spell slots don't increase. You yeah. still only get two spell slots, but you're not, you know, you cast everything at a higher level, so. Okay. Well, that's good to know. 
All right. Well, I'll go ahead and write the other ones in. So uh, do you suggest that I just all put them under spell slot one? No, if it's a second level spell, just, you know, put it in where it belongs. But just note that you're casting everything at second level. So. Okay. For the spell slots, because right now it shows like all the spells are. Yeah, yeah actually, first level, so. you, could, you could change that so that like. Um, let's see. There's not a good. Yeah. Let me uh, put my dog outside real quick. So we could do this, change this to zero. John, I saw Root Kickstarter. You can get all of the games for 150 bucks. Oh, well, it's better I already have two of them. Well, I'm just saying, like, it's, I could still get my hands on the original and that first expansion set. Oh. I didn't know they were doing another Kickstarter for those. Well, no, they're not. It's part of that, that expansion they're doing right now. But if you pledge 150 you can get the, the original game the expansion and the new expansion. Did they open that back up? You gotta come in at the $150 level. So if you see, if you look at your character sheet, I, I changed it so that you have like two second level spell slots. Mm -hmm. So, but when you're putting spells in there, if, it, if they're second level, that you should put them at the second level area. Right. Because it, it, like Shatter would probably go underneath there. Um, and the other ones are just cantrips. Which, that's really nice. I, I'm really happy with the amount of cantrips I'll have. So you know if you click that I button and you type in the spell, if... You can just drag it onto your sheet and it'll put it in the appropriate spot. But sometimes okay. that all the spells aren't in there, so then you have to kind of manually add them in. Yeah. Would um and so whenever you manually add them, can you actually like create the conditions of like to roll them and things like that, or is that something I'll just have to kind of just do manually if they're not in yeah, there. Yeah, so if you click the gear icon, I don't know if you can see me clicking the gear icon when I'm doing it, but um, mm -hmm. there's like, um, in, when you click the gear icon, I'm on Eldritch Blast, if uh, there is uh, output, <clears throat> so there's name, school, casting time, range, target components, concentration, duration, spell casting ability, innate, and then there's this output. If you click on the output, you get an option of a spell card or attack. If you click the attack, it'll put it like in your equipment area. Or not in your equipment area, but like where your weapons are. Mm -hmm. And then you say a spell attack, is it ranged, is it melee? You put in the damage, how much damage it does, what type of damage it is, that's important. Um, and then 
uh, a little bit later. It says include spell description in attack. I like to keep that on. Uh, that way when you roll it, it, if you look at the chat window right now, I rolled your wish bolt. So that way you mm -hmm. kind of know like, it's, you know, it's easy for everyone to see what, what was going on in case there's other effects or something that don't come across. Mm hmm Okay. You can concentrate on the spell for eight hours. <laughs> 24 hours, nice. So uh, that's kind of interesting for Witch Bolt, for Hex, I guess. That's such a long time to... Well, I guess I guess because you can cast Hex to reduce somebody's... Abilities, right? Yeah, chosen abilities, I see. Okay, so that has like a dual purpose other than just battle. That's fun, okay. Um, all right, so yeah, I'll go ahead and enter those so that we have them on there. And uh, I'm gonna probably do some updates to my computer, make sure that it's all up to date because it restart itself saying that something was out of date. So I got to go in there and figure out what component was that? Dude, you got some stuff going on. I do. Yeah. It's not like, I don't even, it's strange. Cause it's like, it only happens whenever like the, my computer was just, it was turned off and I guess it hadn't turned it on for like the last two days. And so it went into, like, it completely shut down because the battery died while well, it was just on standby. And I think that's whenever it has the most issues. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm going to just go and see what, what needs to be updated because that's what it told me. <laughs> Got it. All right, well, I'm going to bed. I'm done with this. That's right. All right. Well, you guys have a good night. You too. You as well, sir. Enjoyed.